Okay. Uh, I am Dr. Ramsaram from uh, Bangalore, and I uh, welcome each and every participant for the sixth uh, Zoom meeting in this Corona crisis time. Uh, here, the most common pathology spine surgeon encounter is uh, high grade. Uh, is spontaneous disease of which uh, at least once in a while a normal spine surgeon should encounter this high grade spondylosis. And uh, this topic was being uh, asked by many people to as a part of our presentations. And so I welcome Dr. Vijay from Fortis Cunningham Hospital to share his experience and uh, teach us how to do reduction in high grade spondylosis. So over to you, Dr. Vijay. Thank you, Ramchandran. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll be speaking about a technique of reducing eye glit spondylolisthesis. So this technique, uh, maybe many of you might be using it, but uh, somehow it's not been described in the literature. So this technique is by posterior only approach, and uh, we do a monosegmental instrumentation. That is, if the list is at alpha S1, so we instrument only alpha and S1 vertebra. So other vertebra are not instrumented, and we don't use any reduction screws. Uh, use uh, conventional polyaxial screws and no special instruments or implants uh, we use. So this is the technique that uh, I'll be describing it. So I'll begin with an example, case example. So there is a, this is a 35 year old uh, lady who complained of progressively increasing back pain and uh, bilateral radicular pain. So this is her X-ray. You can see that uh, she has a high grade with this, grade three, almost uh, going to grade four. And uh, we all agree probably that uh, she would require surgery, that is instrumentation, decompression, and fusion. But uh, whether to do reduction or do an insertive fusion is a topic of debate. So many people uh, so would prefer doing insertive fusion, but there are many advantages uh, uh, with uh, reduction. Like when you reduce, when you reduce, uh, the chance of fusion will be high because the contact surface area is uh, more, and uh, the fusion mass will be under compression. So, uh, and uh, so once you reduce the physiological alignment, the lumbar lordosis is restored to normal. So, the chance of adjacent segment degeneration will be less. And uh, the sharing stresses once you reduce will be less. So, at the fusion junction, and the chance of slip progression will also be less. And once you reduce, uh, reduction itself causes decompression of the neural elements. And cosmetically, reduction gives a better cosmetic appearance because of uh, correction of uh, the retrovision of pelvis and the local kyphosis. So despite uh, reduction having so many advantages, many people do not uh, prefer reduction. This is because uh, the chance of, uh, the main reason being a chance of neurological injury, which is uh, reported to be as high as uh, 31%. And uh, once you reduce, uh, the surgical exposure will be more, the blood loss, operative time, morbidity to the patient will be more. And uh, many of these uh, techniques uh, that has been described in literature is uh, uh, difficult and uh, they require special instrumentation implants. And uh, when you don't do interbody fusion after reduction, the chance of uh, failure is uh, more. And there are many literatures which say that clinical outcome, whether do insert fusion or the reduction in fusion, the clinical outcome is sa same. So because of these reasons, uh, many do not prefer the doing reduction, but uh, do insert fusion. So coming back to the case that I showed, so this is what uh, we did. So we did a monosegmental instrumentation that is instrumented alpha and S1 motibla. Did a, uh, almost complete reduction and uh, did interbody fusion with bone graft. So you can see a standing uh, lateral X-ray, whole spine uh, lateral X-ray. You can see that sagittal vertebral axis, uh, which was positive, so which was uh, uh, displaced anteriorly, uh, pre-op, which is uh, restored to normal post-op. So in this uh, talk, so I would uh, like to briefly uh, discuss the basics, that is the grades of spondylolisthesis, the dysplastic changes that occur, and the changes of pelvic parameters that are seen in spondylolisthesis, and uh, classification of spondylolisthesis based on these, that is a uh, grade and dysplastic changes and pelvic parameters, and uh, the technique of reduction. So that's the main aim to describe the technique, and uh, several techniques that have been uh, described in the literature and the problems with those and uh, clinical and radiological outcomes of uh, the cases that were operated with uh, this technique, and some of the tips uh, to reduce complications while doing the uh, reduction. So, uh, as you all know that uh, grades, uh, the grade of spondylolisthesis was given by Meading and classified into five grades. So, you, what you do is you measure the length of uh, upper end plate of uh, the S1, 
and measure the distance between uh, the posterior end of S1 and the posterior end of L5. So based on this, you classify into five grades. So if uh, it's less than 25%, it's grade one. 25 to 50 is grade two. 50 to 75 is grade three. And 75 to 100 is grade four. And spondyloptosis is grade five. So these are the dysplastic changes that you see in uh, high dysplastic uh, so spondylosis. That is a rounding of uh, the upper end, upper end plate of uh, sacrum. The trapezoid shape uh, L5 vertebral body, vertical sacrum, junctional kyphosis, that is a kyphosis between sacrum and L5 vertebral body, and uh, compensatory hyperlordosis at the rest of the lumbar spine. So, if uh, these uh, dysplastic changes are more, it's called a high dysplastic. If it's low, it's called a low dysplastic spondylosis. So, these are the pelvic parameters. Uh, so that we measure in spondylosis. So pelvic incidence is the angle between the line joining the center point of hip uh, and the center point of uh, the upper end plate of sacrum and a line drawn perpendicular to the upper end plate of sacrum. So this angle is called pelvic incidence and pelvic incidence for an individual is uh, fixed. So unless he has any pelvic fracture or pelvic osteotomy, the pelvic incidence will be fixed throughout his life. So angle between the vertical drawn from the center of hip joint and the line joining the center of hip and the center of uh, the sacrum is called the pelvic tilt. So angle between the upper surface of uh, the sacrum and the horizontal is called the sacral slope. And a vertical line drawn from the center of C2 vertebra, which usually passes through the center of C7 vertebra and the posterior part of S1, this is called sagittal vertebral axis. So if it's pushed anteriorly, it's called po it's positive sagittal vertebral axis. If it uh, goes backwards, then it's a negative sagittal vertebral axis. And the angle between upper end plate of uh, L1 and the lower end plate of L5 is the angle of lumbar lordosis. So normally, uh, pelvic incidence is equal to pelvic tilt plus sacral slope. So the angles formed by sacral slope and pelvic tilt, if you sum up, you get pelvic incidence. So what happens in spondylolisthesis? Spondyl is uh, the L5 vertebra along with the rest of the spine slips forwards. So as a result of this, the sacral, the sagittal vertebral axis is pushed forwards. That is, it becomes positive. So due to this, uh, the patient stoops forwards. So when there's no compensatory mechanism which are, the, which are acting, so the pelvic tilt will be low and the sacral slope will be high. And this is called as balanced spine where the pelvic parameters will be normal, but the patient stoops forwards. This is called as balanced spine. So once the compensatory mechanism is set in, there's a retroversion of pelvis, and the, the rest of the lumbar spine goes into hyperlordosis in order to compensate for the kyphosis at uh, L5 and S1. So as a result of this, so the sagittal vertebral axis goes backwards partially. The sacral slope reduces and pelvic tilt increases. In this case, the pa patient will be upright. So the patient will be standing upright, but uh, you'll have a couched cat. And that is, uh, you'll have flexion at the hip and at the knee. So this is called as an unbalanced spine because the pelvic parameters will be disturbed. That is, the uh, pelvic uh, tilt increases and the sacral slope reduces. So based on these parameters, the label as classified spondylosis into low grade, high grade, where the degree of slip is more, less than 50 and more than 50. And each, uh, each uh, type is further classified into low dysplastic, high dysplastic. And further, the, each uh, type is classified into balanced spine and unbalanced spine. So coming to the technique. So the main aim of uh, reducing is to restore the pelvic parameters to normal and give patient an upright uh, posture. So this is a technique. So we go into posterior midline approach, to conventional approach. Uh, so supposedly we expose the L5 and S1 vertebra. Sometimes even the L4 might be required to expose, required to be exposed. And then we do instrumentation by free and conventional free and technique. So L5 and S1 vertebra are instrumented with uh, four pedicle screws. So then we take a appropriate length rod. So that is suitable for the single level fusion. Then contour it, contour it uh, give, it, give it a smooth uh, lordotic curve and fix it to S1 vertebra. So you fix it in such a way that the upper end of uh, the rod is away from the tulip of the L5 by a distance that is approximately equal to the degree of uh, reduction that you need. So the rod is fixed to the S1 screw in this position. 
so then you take instrument uh, reducer so which is available with all the most of the instrumentation sets so then you apply to the upper end of the rod and push the reducer in such a way that tip of the reducer engages the tip of l5 otiza so when you are doing this uh, because the uh, because the rod is fixed to the s1 screw the s1 screw along with the sacrum tilts anteriorly so thereby correcting the retrovision of uh, pelvis partially so then you close the ratchet of uh, the reducer so once you close the ratchet of reducer so l5 screw along with the l5 vertebra and the rest of the spine is pulled backwards so thereby achieving the reduction and finally so you apply compression between the l5 and s1 screws so this corrects the local kyphosis and gives a lordotic lordosis so these are the uh, interoperative features of the technique so you can see uh, the s1 and l5 vertebra have been instrumented and you can note because of the spondylosis uh, the l5 screw the tulip of the l5 screw is at a lower level compared to the tulip of s1 screw so after once instrumentation is done you do complete decompression you also decompress the l5 roots then you connect a rod connect rod on both the sides so the rod is fixed uh, to the s1 screw in such a way that so the uh, upper end that is a cranial end is away from the tulip of l5 screw hello hello you are you are audible please please go okay 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 so then you apply a uh, apply a reducer so these are reducers available with medronix instruments so once you uh, reduce the reduce the l5 screw that is pull the l5 screw towards the rod so the l5 vertebra moves backwards thereby achieving the reduction so this is after reduction so this is after reduction so the l5 vertebra is reduced back and you can see the l5 now it is also completely decompressed so these are some of the images uh, that we the cases uh, of high grade spondylolisthesis that we operated with this technique in our center you can see all of the grade 3 spondylolisthesis so uh, all of them are reduced uh, so either completely or to grade 1 with uh, just mono segmental instrumentation that is a uh, with the uh, with screws placed only in the l5 and s1 vertebra so in total uh, we had uh, eight such uh, cases so with average age of uh, 43.8 years all were the uh, female patients and the listless was at l5 s1 in majority of them the surgery time was 2 hours approximately and the blood loss was around 268 ml and all patients uh, were mobilized on the same day or the next day of surgery and none of the patient uh, had any neurological deficits or persistent radicular pain and the duration of stay was around uh, on an average around 4 days and uh, the pre operative that all were the grade 3 slip and uh, i've operated few cases of uh, grade 4 also this uh, even grade 4 slips can be managed with this uh, technique so we had uh, followed up these patients uh, on an average of uh, 23 months and at 23 months final follow up uh, uh, clinical this was a clinical outcome now there the vas scores for back pain had reduced from 8.3 to 1.5 and the uh, vas score for leg pain had reduced from from 5.7 to 3.5 and the jvas scores had improved from 7.2 to 20 the ods scores also improved from 40 to 14 so if you see the radiological outcomes uh, the degree of uh, slip so the uh, reduced from 51.54.9% that's almost 54% to 2.4% so the slip was reduced by almost by 91% so lumbar the lordosis is increased by reduced by 16.22 degrees 16.7 degrees and uh, sacral slope increased by 4 degrees so on an average slip angle also include So, uh, my 2.6 degrees kyphosis to, so it includes to lordosis of 21.3 degrees. So, if we see the literature, so several techniques have been described. So, the earliest technique was uh, by do, earliest uh, technique was doing close reduction and cast application. So, this technique is no longer no longer no longer used. It's up, become obsolete. so it requires long immobilization and uh, it's very uncomfortable for the patient so nobody uses this technique 
so one of the earliest uh, surgical technique was by doing instrumentation of s1 and uh, l1 vertebra and doing giving a distraction so and finally removing this rod and uh, instrumenting l5 l5 and s1 vertebra so this was one of the earliest technique uh, employed but the problem with this is uh, it requires a long exposure because you need to instrument uh, s1 and l1 and uh, because of distraction the stretch on the l5 l5 nerve root is too much and also it causes flat back it uh, causes loss of lumbar lordosis so there were modification with this uh, technique later on so people started uh, doing distraction with a short segment instrumentation so that is by instrumenting l4 and s1 and uh, doing a distraction between these two and with the use of reduction screws at l5 so you could achieve even further reduction but again the problem with this was uh, the distraction because of the distraction the local kyphosis the kyphosis between l5 and uh, s1 vertebra couldn't be corrected it even uh, exaggerated the local kyphosis and again the strain on the l5 nerve root was too much because of uh, distraction there was again several modification with this so uh, after instrumenting after the, getting the correction the l4 the screw used uh, they used to remove l4 screw and do a mono segmental fusion so l4 screw was used uh, temporarily only to achieve a reduction and later they used to remove it and again there was a several modification like uh, the sacral dome resection so this uh, modification helped reduce the strain on the l5 nerve root and one of the technique uh, so that gave good reduction with mono segmental instrumentation was uh, using shank screws so here the, the l5 and s1 were instrumented shank screws and it had a double threaded uh, double threaded uh, cannula so on uh, tightening this nut so used to get a reduction so there were uh, there are some unconventional methods some methods uh, the, that have been employed using external fixators also to achieve reduction and uh, there's a method uh, which has been described using an anterior plate so these uh, the surgeons employed used an anterior plate and uh, put a screw posteriorly and tightened the nut tighten the nut from anterior to achieve the reduction did an anterior then did an anterior fusion so many of these techniques are employed are anterior interbody fusion but uh, there are more problems with anterior interbody fusion so the most important being uh, impotency sexual dysfunction so this has been described in the literatures and also the blood loss the morbidity is more with anterior approach so the techniques that has been uh, described so i have summarized in this table and uh, the advantage with the technique that i described is that uh, we employed only mono segmental instrumentation that is only l5 and s1 vertebra were instrumented so because of which the, the exposure was less and the operative time blood loss was also less and uh, we did only posterior uh, only approach so all the complication that was uh, associated with the anterior approach so was not there with this uh, technique and uh, being mono segmental instrumentation the technique uh, preserved the motion segments and uh, that technique uh, didn't use any special instrument or the, any customized uh, screws or the implants so it used a regular pedicle screws and a reducer which is uh, normally available with all the sets and uh, distraction which increased strain on the l5 nerve root and caused local uh, kyphosis was not employed in this technique so instead we did a compression so which restored a uh, restored uh, normal lordosis and this technique can also be employed for lower degree of sleep for the even traumatic fracture dislocations or even a degenerative uh, spondylolisthesis even for other technique other the conditions can also this technique can be employed so this is about a technique uh, so a few uh, tips on reducing complications while reducing uh, spondylolisthesis so there are studies which say that uh, when you reduce the length of uh, l5 l5 nerve root increases and uh, the strain on the l5 so increases in expo exponential uh, manner with respect to the length of the nerve so when once you achieve a 50% reduction the strain on strain on the l5 nerve root is around 20, 29% and once you re reduce it fully the strain becomes around 71% so the strain on the l5 nerve root so increases exponentially with respect to its length so if you are able to achieve a reduction without much increase in the length of l5 so you can uh, significantly reduce the strain on l5 l5 nerve so studies have shown that so when there's a spondylolisthesis particularly in high grade spondylolisthesis 
the L5 nerve root, which is normally should be placed in the foramen, is not in its normal position, but is displaced more posteriorly and is held, uh, uh, held in this position between the pass uh, uh, by the fibers to show the pass interarticulars. So once you reduce it, without doing a complete decomposition of the L5 nerve root, the L5 stretches backward. So thereby increasing the strain on the L5 nerve root and causing neurological deficits. So I would recommend doing a complete decompression of the L5 nerve root, so and then doing the reduction. So in this manual, what happens is the L5 nerve root so it slips back to its normal position into the foramen, thereby reducing the strain and stretch of the L5 nerve root. So whenever you do reduction, so I would suggest uh, so doing complete decompression first, complete decompression, complete laminectomy, and a decompression of the L5 nerve root, then doing a reduction. So other aspect is uh, that in spondyl is this the nerve roots are attached to the the nerve roots are attached to the periosteum of the L5 vertebra and the S1 by, by ligaments called as the dural ligaments and the lateral root ligaments. So and also there are some ligaments attaching the dural dura to the the lamina of the S1. These are called the X filaments. So once you do a reduction with these ligaments intact, you can see there will be excessive stretching of the L5 nerve root and uh, strain of the L5 nerve roots causing uh, neurological deficits. So, so doing a complete decompression and detaching these ligaments by a blunt dissector. So, and then doing a reduction again would uh, reduce the chance of uh, L5 neurological deficits. One more thing is uh, in so I guess model is this majority of the case the L5 pedicle will be dysplastic. So usually. Uh, so I use a 6.5 mm screws. So normally for the for the lumbar lumbar interbody fusions, but uh, in this case because of the dysplastic and thin pedicle, so 6. Point, uh, it may not accommodate 6.5 diameter screws. So even the screws, if it's uh, normally placed, so many cases you see that uh, there is an inferior bridge. So like this case which happened to me. So this an uh, this is a 6.5 millimeter diameter uh, screw. So, which was normally placed, but uh, so on after decomposition, we saw that uh, the threads were visible at the lower border of the pedicle, L5 pedicle. So, another recommendation would be so, which had to be this case had to be revised by removing the screw and uh, so placing the screws, screws, additional screws in the L4 rotibra. So, another recommendation is so, instrumenting L5 using a lower diameter screws, that is a 5.5 millimeter screws and uh, directing it linearly by continuously visualizing and under C arm. So this would uh, reduce the complication of uh, the caudal bridge. So caudal uh, L5 pedicle bridge and uh, the complication of L5 nerve root deficits. So this about uh, my technique. So our technique of reducing spondylosis. is this. So, and uh, some tips to reduce complications. So, Hello. Hello. Ah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. uh, spoken. There has been a lot yeah, of questions that has been coming up. So, okay. Uh, participants can unmute themselves and then can present. First, I will ask about Puyvaraj to come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi, sir. Yuvraj here. Hi, Yuvraj. Yeah. Hi, sir. Oh, thanks for the excellent talk, sir. So I just wanted to ask you yeah. about uh, the role of sacral dome osteotomy in uh, aiding yeah, yeah. Uh, See, sacral dome uh, osteotomy is required only in eye dysplastic. So this, uh, even eye grade spondylosis uh, can be low dysplastic ones, where sacral dome osteotomy is not required. So dome osteotomy is required only in high grade and eye dysplastic, which are the very rare encounters. So, and once you do that, uh, definitely the strain on the L5 nerve root, the stretching of L5 nerve root will be less. Okay, so, so I mean, uh, mm -hmm. just an extension of the same thing. Uh, do you usually break the beak of the L5 also when such cases are there? Uh, it, it would, would be, be yeah. Just uh, see, the case of that I showed were all uh, low dysplastic, even though they were high grade spondylosis, okay. they were low dysplastic. Yeah, yeah. So, in high dysplastic, okay. uh, both the things are required. One is cutting off the sacral dome. Other is uh, other is breaking. Other one is breaking the uh, trapezoidal shaped uh, beak, the beak of uh, L5 vertebra. So that would help in the reduction. Okay, sir. 
uh, one more thing that I wanted to ask. Uh, there's a concept of uh, instead of pulling the L5 onto S1, there's a concept of uh, instrumenting the S1 or uh, getting shunt screws into the pelvis and. Uh, and uh, Vijay, Doctor Dose here. Can I ask one question? Yeah, Dose. I think you uh, are just you are just speaking. I think. You are just. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Right? No, sorry, just sorry. take one minute. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, there's a concept right. of uh, instrumenting the pelvis and antiverting the pelvis to achieve reduction. And uh, I've read that uh, that also gets the L5 root uh, calcis, uh, the instance of L5 root calcis comes I can't hear any you, Raj. Any of... problems, Mike? Uh, uh, am I audible to others? Yeah, you are audible. Those, I think you have to check at your end. Hello? Okay. Go ahead, Raj. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. You are so, any experience yeah. about that, sir? This uh, that I I come you, uh, what, what is this technique? Uh, what so instead of uh, yeah. pulling the L5, so normally, so normally the technique that we are discussing uh -huh, about yeah, yeah. is this uh -huh. instrument L5, uh -huh. and uh, we pull the L5 onto S1. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. so instead of that, I think there's a school of thought that says you can instrument the pelvis, like uh, mm. you can put a couple of shunt spins in the pelvis, not the S1 or even in the iliac crests and uh, mm, you can mm. use those to maneuver mm, the mm, pelvis mm. Anti into antiversion. Mm. And uh, they think, say uh, that uh, this uh, brings mm. the... I have not done it personally, I have not mm, seen mm, it, mm, it but something that I have come mm. across. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am not aware of that technique, but uh, okay. uh, some people what they do is uh, they hyperextend uh, hip joints. So uh, once they hyperextend yeah. so hyper hyper the yes, hip sir. joints, so the pelvis the retrovision of the pelvis gets corrected. So this another yeah, method this which, is in, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. which can be employed. So this yeah. is like an extension of the same thing. So instead of mm -hmm. addressing the pelvis, these people, uh -huh. I mean, they instrument the pelvis and directly antivert the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And they yeah, say that, that, that is a technique that has been described. Yeah. So what you do is uh, you hyperextend, ask the OT technician or somebody to hyperextend the hips, by the, both the hips simultaneously. So that way the uh, pelvis gets, uh, the retrovision of the pelvis gets corrected. Pelvis gets antiverted. So that's a method which has been described. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Prince, you had some question. Dr. Prince? Hello, Prince. Hi, Vijay. Hi, Prince. Prince. Hello. That was a good talk. I enjoyed your talk. <laughs> I thank just you, Prince. For the sake uh, of the average surgeons like me, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> because the thing is always, the, I feel that the on, the prerequisite to have a, um, to do this monosegmental reduction technique, yeah. have mm -hmm. a very good L5 screw. Oh, L5. So oh. Most most mm -hmm. important is that. So I feel that most of the time, mm -hmm. because of the dysplastic nature of the pedicle. Mm -hmm. I sometimes feel that the screw is not exactly in the center of the pedicle, as you showed in one of the cases, mm -hmm. there was an inferior piece. Yeah. Some of the time it occurs. Is there a mm -hmm. um, thing to avoid that you said directing it above, doing it yeah. in direct position? Do mm -hmm. you always do that or you try to do a laminate? Uh, what, what I do normally is uh, just I expose uh, by posterior approach. Then I see the lysis, so the level will be confirmed. Then I put in gear shift. I put in gear shift, I go about uh, 20 or 25 millimeters to, with a gear shift. Then I take a CM picture. So that way I'll know the direction of the screw. So the level, everything I'll know with the one CM picture. So if it's caudal, then I change the direction. So anyway, the gear shift is gone only for 20 or 25 millimeter. Then I change it, I try to go more linearly. So two things are important. One is the world of L5 screw and the quality of bone. So if it's very osteoporotic, uh, definitely you can't do a uh, monosegmental. So either you have to go to L4 or do an inside to fixation. So to get a good uh, L5 purchase, so th this is what I would do. So I put a gear shift, go for 20 millimeters, then check CR. If it's too caudal, then I change the direction, go cranial. Okay, so is there a role for ILX screws in the grid? I like uh, not uh, like a routine, so I don't uh, mm. uh, put uh, I like screws routinely. But uh, so probably even even if it's a very osteoporotic, uh, if you get bicortical patches, I I think you get a good uh, good uh, S1 screws. So I like screws may not be required. I think most of the guys. So I've seen sacral insufficiency fracture. 
which uh, you keep yeah. talking about i think secular insufficiency factor yeah yeah that that's because so i think that is very there so to put, yeah <laughs> so i think okay. uh, to put ilex cruise as a routine for no, no, not in, all uh, not all cases no, uh, probably not required i think because the second uh, insufficiency factor does not come in mono segmental or if you are doing uh, even yeah. up to if suppose if you are doing from l1 to s1 something like a degen mm-hmm, thing you mm-hmm, yeah. not instrumenting we have seen um, mm-hmm. insufficiency factors that's why i wanted mm-hmm. to put, yeah I've very seen, osteoporotic uh, bones with the right thing uh, routinely l4 screw l5 screw, i think better to go to s1 and i get screw for a, a high grade a high mm-hmm. displaced ones so i was thinking whether th- that concept of anchor points getting into the pelvis mm. is right or is it a overkill that's what i wanted to ask you mm. Mm. no i feel uh, if it's a very osteoporotic bone and you are doing a long uh, fixation so better to include ilium better to put ilium i think okay thank you i'll leave it for the others vijay uh, thank you uh, i, I request all you. participants uh, to introduce themselves and be crisp in asking questions uh, dr shai sir Dr. Shaisha, you want some questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a question. I'm, I'm Dr. Shaisha. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent presentation. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, what is, what are your experiences regarding the delta fixation? I mean, in osteoporotic, uh, we we are not getting a good hold of the pedicle screws. And, yeah. Uh, 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 delta fixation. Uh, no, I've not even seen uh, anybody doing it. i've never done myself so not uh, just uh, read the uh, read it uh, read about it so i don't know any, if anybody okay. does it delta fixation right mm-hmm. yeah, actually i had only one experience uh, we had we had a root injury in that so i just wanted to ask about mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah. so delta fixation you directly fix from s1 to l5 right that is you do insert yeah, fixation yeah. Mm-hmm. insert fixation in that mm Uh, uh, we didn't had a good hold of the pedicle screw so uh, uh, okay. we we just we went went in for the salvage procedure uh, okay, okay yeah i think it is more of a salvage yeah. procedure if your l5 screw the most important screw in high grade list is l5 screw is not good and you have no hold on that particular bone which has slipped you are not able to reduce it back then as a salvage you put screw in l4 yeah i think so and yeah. connect s1 directly into l5 it's a sort of a salvage yeah. thing so Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ram, can I add something here? Yeah, please, please, Dr. Varnish. Dr. Varnish. Hello. Hey, please, Adam. Hello. Ah, uh, hi. Good evening, Hello. Dr. Varnish. Here. Oh, yeah, uh, regarding this delta, delta uh, thing, uh, uh, I have experience of doing it for four or five cases myself. Hmm. Okay. So these ones, usually, okay. as Ram was pointing out, if the L5, usually I tend to plan this for elderly. 60 lay plus ladies with osteoporotic bones okay. definitely you know it's going to be yeah. compromised where you yeah, can't yeah. Don't rely on your l5 to reduce it completely i yeah. usually take a bmd to confirm osteoporosis then okay. go and check the l5 yeah. screw initially first screw is going to be l5 see if that mm-hmm. hole is good enough for a reduction still okay. i'm not convinced straight away go for a delta fixation where i will angle it accordingly under cm guidance mm-hmm. to get a purchase into l5 Okay. So that one has to be CM guided, and uh, and I usually I put the screw after doing the interbody work. I usually take off scrape of all the disc so that the screw okay. itself will give some compression. Okay. So, so you and start add some post lat. Yeah. You start regular S one screw. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, regular S one screw. Regular S one screw uh, and uh, uh, angle it cranially under CM uh, guidance. Okay. And uh, till you get a good purchase, hmm. and it has to be a long screw, definitely. Mm, angle it cranially and so, medially also, I think. Huh? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Angle it cranially uh, and medially. And uh, uh, most important thing is try to prepare the end plate maybe before you put okay. your screws inside. Yeah. Put your gear okay. shift, prepare it before putting okay. the screw. Make sure that you uh, put some Hello? graft in between the space. So it's like, okay. like a lag. It goes through so, the disc and yeah, it's almost the something like your lag. Something like your lag. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, and uh, incidentally all these patients have given terifract post op bedil for 3 4 months uh, okay. and uh, all of them settled well with a good post lateral fusion as well so okay. i had very little numbers four four five cases only 
So I couldn't make okay. it serious, but that, this is my limited experience there. Okay. Thanks, thanks okay. for sharing that experience. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharaf. Dr. Sharaf. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Abhishek Saraf from Bihar. I wanted to ask hi. whether, uh, I mean, in many of your X-ray, I'm not seeing any interbody fusion. So, like, what's your criteria for the interbody fusion? And kindly enumerate, uh, like, kindly tell us point-wise that first you decompress, then you reduce, mm -hmm. or like first you put on the screws and reduce, then you decompress. What's your like usual protocol? Uh, yeah, steps of surgery you want to test. Yeah. Uh, I Okay. And roll so as a routine, uh, what we do, uh, yeah, uh, we do instrumentation first, so then do decompression, then reduce, then do interbody fusion. So all the cases we have done interbody fusion, but we are not put cage. Cage is not put. So that's the bone graft. So most of the cases what we are doing is uh, we are doing interbody fusion with just bone graft. So the first exercise that I showed you, so you can see that there's a bone graft. So this is the bone graft, the white uh, so the fragments that you see, the, the, the pieces of bone there. So we do interbody fusion with just bone graft. So we're doing a study uh, comparing uh, posterior interbody fusion with just bone graft and uh, with cage and bone graft. So, but most of the case we do fusion with just bone graft. So all the cases, uh, posterior interbody fusion has been done and it's been done with just bone graft. No cage has been put. I, I do agree with that uh, point which I told and uh, uh, in the Pondicherry of Pendle Science, which, uh, we did only bone graft as an interbody uh, thing, had a good results when compared to actually to say honestly, <coughs> age and this yeah. one, the fusion goes much faster in this. Yeah, yeah. because of the larger surface area. Yeah, 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 correct, and, correct. So hopefully uh, another uh, medical uh, that, uh, study completed. So even I feel uh, personally that uh, in my practice, uh, just bone graft gives better results. Uh, the next question, anyone else wanted? To, uh, they can unmute and ask the questions. Dr. Ankit, hello sir. Uh, here from the yeah. uh, goes, 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 come. Uh, is there? Uh, okay. Vijay, what is your threshold yes. for high grade listhesis to use a L4 pedicle? You always uh, go with the mind you do the pedicle, the instrument S1, L5, and L4, or you try first with single level fusion, or if not reducing, go to L4. How is the, what is the threshold? See, most of the case, I try to do mono segment. So I've done even grade four uh, listhesis also. I've done just a mono segmental instrumentation and uh, achieved a complete reduction. It's possible only if the bone quality is good. So if the patient is very obese or the, the bone is very osteoporotic, so I would prefer going to L4 also. So that, that would be my criteria. If the bones are very osteoporotic or the, the, patient, uh, the patient body weight is too much, so in that case, I would uh, prefer going to L4. Okay, one more thing. Uh, for, for L5 pedicle, you use a reduction screws or normal screws for reducing it? This uh, technique which I described uh, was done without uh, using reduction screw, but you can use uh, employ same technique uh, using reduction screws. So without using a reducer, if you are using reduction screws, so you don't require reducer. So the technique will be same. So instead of uh, the regular screw, you use, use a reduction screws, and you don't uh, use a reducer. Okay, thank you, Jay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ankit, can you hear me? Hello. Can the participants hear me? Hello. Uh, Dr. Ankit had a question. Dr. Ankit. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello, hello, Dr. Ankit. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dr. Karthik here. Yeah, Karthik. Yeah, Dr. Karthik. Yeah, uh, I just want to know. I am also in the same league of uh, doing only bone graft thing as uh, fusion. Okay. So, how is your post-op protocol for them? It's, uh, it's until the uh, fusion occurs, uh, oh. you don't have an anterior support as such. So it's just a cancellous bone. So there's yeah. a lot of stress on your uh, implants till then. Mm -hmm. So oh. how do you go about the protection? Uh, like uh, I feel if the bone quality is good. 
so you as a pedagogical school itself you uh, three column no, support sorry. so uh, pedagogical yeah. school itself is of shikas schools it gives a three column support pedagogical school yeah, itself yeah. gives three column support so that is most of the cases sufficient if the bone graft is uh, if the bone quality is good so if the bone uh, if the bone quality is not uh, good if it's very osteoporotic so again <laughs> uh, as uh, dr bernie told i would uh, start on therapeutic post op and uh, start on uh, all osteoporosis treatment probably vitamin d and give probably ls belt additional support so in very osteoporotic uh, so i think it's better to keep uh, cage as standby and you can use a cage for additional anti support if it's uh, the bone is very osteoporotic and if the patient is obese so that would give additional uh, support but if the bone quality is good so i feel uh, just bone graft and pedicle screws would uh, suffice in most of the cases the pseudo arthrosis in your uh, things how is your experience like whether you you just clinic uh, uh, relevant pseudo arthrosis and anything like that see in these cases uh, follow up was done for around 23 months and uh, in, in uh, none of these cases a ct scan was done at the uh, final follow up but uh, uh, in the excess uh, there was no any like loosening of the screws or no implant failure so which would indicate uh, implant failure so most of the cases would go for fusion so uh, even yeah. regular cases also regular interbody fusions like uh, degenerative lesions or stenosis yeah. cases also i just put in bone graft and um, never had any implant failure so i think most of the cases go for fusion yeah 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 thank you so it was very reassuring for me thank <laughs> hello any more questions no. hello hello yes dr nikunj here from uh, amdabad yeah and dr nikunj yeah yeah uh, any points for pediatric high grade uh, spondylolisthesis would you say uh, uh, you need any uh. specific instrumentations uh, uh, considering uh, uh, size of the pedicle and uh, that was a good 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 that good question yeah dr vijay uh, i think uh, even the pediatric uh, you can use the same technique so as i told i've done even grade 4 listers also with the same technique so probably if it's very high grade listers uh, if the pedicles are very small uh, you would uh, uh, probably uh, include l4 also because in case of dysplastic l5 pedicles will be very small so probably mm-hmm. it would accommodate only 4.5 mm screws or so 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 probably would include l4 also to get a good purchase okay what if uh, 4.5 will not go uh, uh, i think uh, most of the case 4.5 would go i think even in uh, so very young patient also young. so yeah, i yeah. think uh, uh, 4.5 i think any pedicle would accommodate 4.5 also i think so otherwise uh, probably would uh, do a salvage procedure like instrument l4 and s1 and do just a fusion at l5 s1 so just do interbody fusion okay. without instrumentation or well, as uh, dr bernie told you can do a delta fixation so there i think probably reduction wouldn't be possible i think to add up to that to add up to that dr nikunj i encountered such one case uh, in my practice Uh, what we did is we kept an option of four room screws, and even with the four room screw, I had a tough time. Four room screws, four, five, six among options are available with the Bluebus. So I used the four room screws for that L5. And uh, as when the size of the goes down, dysplasia is high, the hold on L5 will not be good. Then we have to go ahead and fix the L4 also. so a uh, couple of questions from other uh, persons dr ankit you want to add up questions uh, yes sir i'm reading this is dr ankit uh, nice talk sir vijay sir so okay. i just wow. to, it is very difficult to get into the l5 s1 disc space in this high grade uh, lysthesis uh, to do the interbody work so would you put mm-hmm. a temporary rod on one side distract it like other interbody fusions which we do or uh, you just go ahead uh, decompress it and without uh, distracting it get into the disc space like that no you can go with the disc space uh, go into the disc space even in the high grade lysthesis and uh, it's necessary to remove the free the, the remove the disc so before reduction so only then you you'll be able to reduce so uh, even in grade 4 this is also i think you can go into the disc space and take it out 
that is uh, actually uh, has to be done before the reduction so, uh, so some case if it's a very uh, degenerated disc uh, yeah. hmm. some case uh, if it's very degenerated disc uh, you may not get get any disc material but you can just hmm. go into a disc space with either the osteotome or the now the so like a cuvette so and just hmm. uh, free free the l5 and uh, s1 uh, then you can attempt a reduction so it has to be would done you, it's a step which has to be done before reduction yeah would you distract it with a temporary rod something like that before getting in or uh, you go ahead without uh, no, no i think most of the case uh, reduction is uh, like distraction is not required if you okay. do require you can just uh, osteotomize the the upper end of s1 so distraction mm -hmm. most of the times is not required i think and i feel distraction causes more problems so better to avoid distraction yeah and uh, have you just uh, data in situ fusion in any of these cases uh, like uh, because like you would have uh, uh, experience no, i have done quite a bit uh, in situ fusions also i have done quite a bit but i am not uh, shown in this uh, because this study was uh, uh, only on uh, reduction so reduction technique and uh, the results after reduction so if the bones are very osteoporotic the wood is not good so i do in situ fusion also okay thank you sir well, add up to that uh, what i usually do is uh, the first instrument exposed instrument l5 and as well as s1 and based on my hold on l5 i decide whether to go above or not so instrument bed i do laminectomy see the roots bilaterally l5 completely free then i place the rod reduce it and i distract it it distracted and approach the disc space clear it up inter body cage or what are bone graft which i'm going to use as a inter body institute and then later at the end i compress it so that's how i follow it up to reach sometimes the disc space may be completely collapsed where you may not have an access to the inter body itself the comments sir anything about this technique which i will told dr vijay hello hello ramchandan uh, so uh, yeah. i missed you uh, can i just repeat the what yeah what i do is i right. then i instrument instrument from okay L5 yeah and we yeah. hold on l5 that decides me whether to go up or not in the l4 the hold is good then yeah yeah i do a complete right. lambda tendon ah, yeah. complete lambda tendon i see the l5 roots mm -hmm. yeah then i place the rod yeah. on one yeah. side and reduce it Uh, if the space is completely mm, okay. dead, collapsed, I distract a little mm. bit, and then I cure it. Mm, okay. The work is done. Then I fill it with spacers or whatever wound, and then at the end I compress it. As uh, okay, you know, okay, okay. This is hypergraphy. So this is just to ease me mm. reaching the disc. Mm -hmm. Disc space. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, Any... But uh, when you are putting the rod, so when the disc is intact. So will it not affect uh, reduction? Will no, it uh, not the, interfere with the reduction? No, this is what I'm saying. Uh, times these yeah. let's say the disc is completely dead. It is worn out. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's worn out. And it okay. Can't be, uh, uh, the, why it, mm -hmm. this is because the disc has failed. That's why it goes for a high grade disc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. the post yeah. structures are not formed well. The disc goes uh, yeah. long time, and the disc degenerates, and it goes for sleep. So. Yes, long back. This is topic. <laughs> Your thesis, thesis in fellowship. <laughs> that's all. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Around six to seven years back. Yeah, no, no. I don't know. Sir, get that. Tell me. We should go. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Okay. Okay. Well, sir, meeting is over, eh? No, no. It's still continuing. Presentation. Presentation is over. The discussion is going on. Question and answers is going on, eh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you summarize a little bit about uh, your technique here? Yes, I missed it. Uh, just over uh, two three seconds. Okay, just a minute. Uh, uh -huh. I'll open one small 
Mm, okay, just a minute, just a minute. So I'll I'll do a small brief presentation huh, for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, it's a four five sentences. Okay, man. Uh, okay, okay, good. So, In brief, you have to please, Dr. Vijay. Okay, the, so just I discussed the uh, technique of... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this yeah, yeah. Huh? so this technique is by instrumenting, by doing a mono-segmental instrumentation. Okay. So, so technique is... So I described what... So I then I described what are pelvic parameters, what happens in uh, listers. So uh -huh. then this is a technique. So what we do is we instrument L5 and S1, put a lot uh -huh. in this. Fix it to uh -huh. S1. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so then you take a reducer and push the reducer so that it takes yeah. L5. Okay. So, uh, so this uh, corrects the retroversion of pelvis a little bit. So uh -huh. then you close the ratchet of the reducer, so which pulls the L5 uh, screw along with the vertebra and uh, reduces it. Then you do a compression. So this is the final reduction. So these are interoperative features. So these are the, the eight cases we had, C this. So these are the uh, radiological and outcomes, and clinical and outcomes. And 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 these are techniques which are... Uh, can you show me the post-op x-rays? Uh -huh. uh, post-op... Uh, so these uh, are post-op x-rays. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. So all are grade 3 listers. So uh -huh. I've done a few grade 4 also which are not shown in this. So, uh -huh. so grade 3, all are grade 3. This is uh -huh. so which are used. Mm. Okay. Mm. So you just uh, do a monosegmental instrumentation and they reduce it by using monosegmental reduction, uh, monosegmental instrumentation, then reduce and do a posterior interbody fusion. Okay. 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 Yeah. Then I showed some uh, tips to reduce complications. Uh -huh. Like the see the strain on the L5 nerve root, it increases exponentially. So if you are able to reduce the stretching of L5 nerve root even slightly, the strain you can reduce significantly. So see, there's an article which says that the L5 nerve root in I that is this is displaced backwards. So it's uh -huh. not in the normal position. Normal is not in the foramen, but it's displaced backwards. So in this okay. case, uh, the final category is tissue there. So once you do a complete decomposition of the L5 nerve root, then reduce. So what happens is it goes back to its normal position, anterior, so that uh, stretching will be less. So and uh -huh. the ligaments called the lateral root ligaments and the dual ligaments, which attach the L5 nerve root to the posterior the margin of uh, the S1 and L5. So after doing complete decompression, just uh, uh -huh. dissect these ligaments using a blunt penfield uh, dissector. So just uh -huh. cut these ligaments. So then uh -huh. reduce. So if you these ligaments are intact, then you reduce these ligaments will themselves will stretch uh, the L5 nerve root and increase okay. the strain. So you okay. reduce these ligaments, then reduce. Uh -huh. So the strain uh -huh. on the L5 nerve root will be less. And another technique is uh, using instead of using a 6.5 millimeter uh, screw, use a 5.5 uh -huh. and direct it uh, cleanly by looking at the CR, yeah. so lateral uh -huh. the CR image. You direct it more cleanly so that uh, it uh, the chance of caudal breach will be less. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Vizal, you use uh, uh, polyaxial screws or monoscrews? So, this is a summary. Dr. Vizal, mm -hmm. I, I use uh, polyaxial. Polyaxial are better. Uh, hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Polyaxial? I use uh, polyaxial. Polyaxial is uh, better for the reducing. Oh, what's the, what's the, all the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 Oh, mobile uh, listers are uh, fixed one. Uh, what was the preoperative uh, status of the disc and uh, segmental mobility? Uh, no, uh, not all the cases had a flexion extension uh, excess, but uh -huh. uh, it was not like a fused uh, L5 was not fused to S1. So, uh, I'm just asking interoperatively. Was the, was the... Mm. They were mobile, uh -huh. mobile, all were mobile. Okay. They were not like uh, fused. Well, you have to break down with the osteotome. They were not like that. Okay, okay. So uh, because, uh, uh, because most of the time they are only this kind of mobile uh, list. This uh, you will be able to do it uh, with the monosegmental. Uh, in most of the rigid uh, segmental. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, some cases. It... You, uh, I think I have I have done few cases of uh, this. Uh, tried it in a rigid one. 
but you will be you won't be able to reduce more than one grade uh yeah. it's a segmental uh, thing but uh, this kind of if you already fused yeah yeah, yeah. if it's already is, fused i think better to hmm. this is my experience so that's why i just telling you okay. okay yeah yeah so i think uh, better to just uh, instrument and uh, do decompression if it's already fused yeah so but in that case uh, if you feel now my my experience uh, is that if you uh, if you feel that yeah. it is powerful to reduce with a uh, mono segmental uh, instrumentation mm. it's better yeah. go for a one more segment uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it gives you one more segment uh, uh, anchor mm. and it reduces the cost of complication and uh, yeah, mm. the loss of reduction also yeah. Uh, and the, yeah, actually, actually, it it uh, takes away uh, takes away the stress in the alpha uh, pedicles also. Yeah, absolutely. So, see, uh, this study I have discovered only mono segmental instrumentation, and I have taken only those cases where mono segmental uh, instrumentation was successful. And uh, there have okay. been many instances where the alpha screw hold was not good. So, in those okay. cases, we have gone to uh, L four. and uh, because okay. where the like the body weight uh, patient body weight is too much so in those okay. case also better go to uh, instrument l4 yeah, yeah. l4 just more segmental uh, may, uh, i've seen can, like can you can, 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 you, can you summarize uh, the uh, 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 can you how to choose a patient for a mono segmental uh, instrumentation where you feel that uh, this this kind of patients are uh, better for a mono segmental can you just uh, elaborate Ah, uh, I feel uh, see uh, in the study we have not uh, described it, but personally I would feel that if the bones are very osteoporotic and uh, and the L5 the old of the L5 screw is not good, and if the patient is very obese, in all those cases I think better to go uh, include a L4 also. And if the uh, L5 particle is too dysplastic. Okay. And also, and also, a rigid segment, uh, segmental list. Uh, hmm. uh, Especially elderly patient with a rigid segment, where I think uh, you have to add one more uh, because in a rigid segment, if you you can you, you may be able to achieve the reduction, but what happens postoperatively there is a chance that it might uh, you might you lose your reduction. Reduction. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, that one. I think we have to consider. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I would like to uh, uh, stop this sharing, and I will show my one X-ray, which I want uh, the seniors here to comment on. Uh, shall I do that, Doctor Vijay? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I will stop uh, share my screen. Yeah. I think uh, you can see me. so you can see here right that patient has l5 over s1 spondyloptosis oh yeah, yeah. and this is spondyloptosis yeah so this sort of cases how do we manage and uh, dr guru dr vijay dr prince so here it comes the role of spondylectomy or reduction how do you do reduction those these things it's open to all okay i'll uh, this case is uh, not operated i would say this case uh, is not operated just uh, an extra i'm showing uh, it up just for discussion purpose so this is spondylotomy in this case uh, yeah. mm, it's not possible more segmental definitely is not possible because you see uh, the l5 particle is very small huh so and uh, it's a complete uh, spondyloptosis so i would prefer doing first instrumenting um, l5 so it's for the l4 so then try to get at least 4.5 mm screw into into the l5 vertebra then do an osteotomy of the sacrum so take out the upper edge of uh, so the upper end plate so just uh, osteotomy the upper end plate of s1 so then also uh, remove the uh, posterior inferior corner of l5 then uh, attempt a reduction so either by using the reduction screw or with a reducer the technique that i described okay. 
this is the only one which i have okay 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 mr everything is digitalized the disk is like literally nothing ah i think there is a one calculation is there man whether to uh, decide the uh, spondyl or spondylectomy or uh, whether you can reduce it uh, by drawing a line by forget it Hmm. But uh, whether they update, depending no, upon this, the no, this case is in the patient. Patient is saying, "I want a surgery. What do you do?" I think I I I I I go it for, go for a, a spondylectomy. I uh, first actually what what I do is I will try to do it all from posterior, and I will keep uh, anterior procedure also as an option. because uh, sometimes you won't be able to get it uh, depending upon the uh, uh, flexibility at the l5 and s1 i don't think it's a uh, uh, it's a flexible i think i think it's just one i think there is a, almost uh, the l5 end plate superior end plate almost uh, parallel with the uh, s1 end plate Uh, so i think i i I'll, i'll try to do it posteriorly if not possible i will keep a anterior also as an option okay dr prince you want to add something um i had one case uh, we did like this in uh, the place where i did fellowship so the surgeon felt that uh, reducing this is a uh, task which is much more uh, <clears throat> morbid morbid procedure so he felt that an in situ fusion is ideal for this so i also feel that an in situ fusion can be tried uh, for this patient especially we can do something like a um as barani was saying no so you Delta fix. Take a long time. No delta. Then... No, I think. Uh, is it possible delta? You are able to hear me, Ram? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can. So, what what I would do is doing that in situ fusion, mm-hmm. do a posterior decompression, direct decompression of the L5 roots, and then what an additional procedure we can do is an. postrolateral will say turn down procedure like you osteotomize the sacral ala turn it down onto the l5 and then place some grafts like match sticks so that is a procedure which can be done additional to the in situ screws what you do through the sacrum uh, to the l5 uh friends uh, what i want to ask you is uh, so will uh, will you uh, measure will you measure i know you uh, may just yes yes sir tell me sir uh, will you will you measure uh, l5 a super end plate uh, uh, for a pelvic incidence in this case will you max max l5 okay hello hello yeah ah. voice is not clear it's not reaching properly ah prince what i want to ask is uh, we are doing a uh, in situ fusion well, that's okay uh, ah yeah. paris uh, how do you do it in situ fusion means how do you do it posterolateral yeah posterolateral along with that the screw is through the sacrum through the mm-hmm. s1 and how you take it and through the body of l5 like how mm-hmm. to do a delta gram, something like that mm-hmm. and then uh, do the will say turn down like a sacral ala you take posterolaterally sacral ala you turn it down onto the l5 which will be very steep but still if you are able to do that and get an raw surface there i have only seen such procedures done because no, 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 most of the time what will, uh, what happens is uh, l5 trans you won't be able to see l5 transverse process because uh, exactly even uh, it's uh, most of the time it's rudimentary i i think you have to extend your postural fusion up to l4 other than yeah. l 
some sometimes it goes up to l4 we have to fuse it yeah i agree yeah. with you most because of the time the l5 transverse process most of the time it's rudimentary you want even you want to be able to uh, you want you will be able to see only uh, one one centimeter or uh, one centimeter of the uh, transverse process yeah yeah i agree with you the mm-hmm. instrumentation we have to extend to l4 mm-hmm. and uh, we have to do a uh, posterior lateral fusion from l4 so the, down yeah. to s so the this is less process. morbid the debate is it's less morbid than doing a, a vertebrectomy and uh, getting the uh, reduction that's what yeah, i mean <clears throat> Uh, but uh, but you are but you are not uh, you are you are keeping the altered uh, means abnormal biomechanics uh, same. I will say will it change after the fusion? That's that is there, but they say that um, this is how. See, if they are presenting in adolescence, like sixteen, fifteen, or sixteen years with the dysplastic mm-hmm. cystis like this, they say that they have been living with it for sixteen years like that. So that is the. debate again whether to reduce it to get the sagittal balance right or to do an infu- in situ fusion but in in terms of only thinking about morbidity of the procedures and reducing your complications they say that in situ fusion is much better than trying all this uh, techniques in a spondyl orthosis Is there uh, is there any study uh, on uh, after uh, fusion uh, the L4? Uh, for example, if you are extending the fusion from L4 to S1, and the L L4 uh, cranial implant becomes a S S1 implant, isn't it? Yeah, the study has been done. Yeah, yeah. Is there is there any any study on uh, pelvic incidence based on after fusion? Or, uh, yeah, there is a study. Yeah, Dr. Guru, yeah. there is a study uh, published in the Asian Science Journal from uh, Ganga. They say once you fuse uh, L5 or S1 or L4, L5 S1, the new sacrum is shifted a bit, and uh, the change in pelvic incidence also happens because they can't get obviously from the newer sacrum. Yeah, it it changes. It cha- it actually changes the pelvic incidence. Is there any study? on uh, now post uh, after fusion is there any study on uh, whether it becomes a normal a uh, equal to a normal pelvic incidence or anything like that correct it says that it becomes normal okay so it becomes a normal pelvic incidence correct correct uh, dr natarajan so in, in, in that case yes, in I, I think, I think, I think are, I, I think we are uh, okay. Uh, I think the what the princess uh, described is I think we can answer. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, that's my that's my opinion. Okay. Like less morbid, less morbid, uh, uh, less uh. less complications. Uh, yeah, everyone will be happy. Doctor Nadarajan sir, how are you? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine, uh, Ramchand. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh-huh. Okay. So very nice, difficult, nice. difficult case, Narendra. Right? I think so. You have, what you have put in the X-ray, uh, uh, spondylosis. This is waiting actually. Waiting. Uh, waiting actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hope everything is good, sir. In Kerala. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Fine. Okay, everything okay. is going on well. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. Okay. Vijay, you are closing uh, comments, closing things, Dr. Vijay from your side. Uh, so thank you very much. uh for the appreciating my talk and uh so this kind of uh, like online uh, conferences i think i'm experiencing experiencing for the first time i think it's very yeah. good and a uh, lot of participants and um, and the, very much the, active participation it was a very nice experience so i try okay. i try to connect thanks, thanks whenever i'm it was good sir you had nice uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wind up here. Thank you. Here. So we'll meet up soon day after tomorrow with some other talks. Bye. Thank you, Guru. Good night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night. Thank you, Vijay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.